Now discuss about some common lot sizing rules. While there are several lot sizing rules that have been developed, some that are seldom are beyond the scope of this book. The more common rules are lot for lot. This rule was described earlier in the example. It basically says you order the exact quantity needed to meet the net requirements for the period being evaluated. Fixed quantity. As the name implies, this rule says you order the same quantity each time you order. The most common reasons would be that the quantity results from an economic analysis showing that quantity is the lowest total cost to produce or procure or that there is some standard packaging used and therefore all orders need to be in multiples of that package quantity. If the quantity comes from the economic analysis case, often the fixed lot size represents the minimum quantity that must be ordered, while in the packaging case the quantity implies that any requirement above the stated lot size must be ordered in integer multiples of the stated lot size least unit cost. This method tries to evaluate ordering several periods worth of requirements in order to possibly take advantage of a quantity discount for the item. Perhaps the easiest way to illustrate is with an example. An item has an order cost of 50 US dollar per order, a base price of 300 US dollar each, but a quantity discount price of 270 US dollar per item is offered. If the quantity purchased is 500 or more units, there is an inventory carrying cost of 1 US dollar per item for every period the item is held in inventory. The per period requirements for the item over the next 6 periods are given as period 1 requirements 120, period 2 requirements 80, period 3 requirements 100, Period 4 requirements 150, period 5 requirements 100, and period 6 requirements 200. And based on the information above, the following table shows the least unit cost analysis. Some of these calculations and rows need further explanation. The inventory cost column, for example, uses the carrying cost of 1 US dollar per unit per period. The 730 US dollar carrying cost for period 4, for example, comes from the fact that to order 450 units, the cumulative amount for periods 1 through 4 means that the 80 required in period 2 would be held for one period until used 80 US dollar, and the 100 required for period 3 would be held for two periods 200 US dollar, and the 150 required for period 4 would be held for three periods. 450 US dollar. The sum of the 450 US dollar plus 200 US dollar plus 80 US dollar gives the 730 US dollar carrying cost value. Looking at the cumulative total cost for the same period, it comes from ordering 450 units at 300 US dollar, total of 135 US dollar and then adding the order cost of 50 US dollar and the carrying cost of 730 US dollar. The period labeled 4Q also needs explanation. Sometime during period 5 we will reach the cumulative target of 50, 500 units for the quantity discount. This is because the cumulative amount required through period 4 is 450 units. And the requirement in period 5 is 100 units. For analysis, we look at the point during period 5 when we hit that 500 requirement boundary, requiring 50 units above those required in period 4, and call that point period 4Q. Note that in that row, the unit price changes to the discount price of 270 US dollar. The inventory carrying cost comes from the fact that those extra 50 units would not be used until period 5, meaning they are held for 4 periods at a total carrying cost of 200 US dollar. Adding that 200 US dollar to the 
thirty US dollar cost for period four gives the nine hundred thirty US dollar carrying cost in that row. This table clearly shows in the cost per unit column that is worth while to purchase the quantity discount quantity, but no more. Notice that if more are purchased than the five hundred units, the cost per unit starts to rise because of the carrying cost. Least period cost. This method is very closely related to the least unit cost method, but evaluates on the basis of cost per period rather than cost per unit. Taking the data from the least unit cost example above, we can see how this calculation works. The number used to divide the one lakh thirty five thousand nine hundred eighty US dollar in period four Q was four point five. That value came from noting that the 50 units more than the total required for period for exactly a proportion of 0.5 of the 100 units required for period 5. 50 by 100 is equal to 0 0.5. Using this analysis, one would select a large size of 550 units since that gives the least period cost.